Hey guys, this is Braden Break, and we're gonna go ahead and cover Grafton Rolls uh, Regionals deck. Um, we're gonna do a little deck profile for it. Um, I have it built right here. Um, it's a Vespiquin. He ran he ran Vespiquin, uh, Flareon, Jolteon, and basically, uh, if you don't know what the deck does, um, the two main attackers are Vespiquin with the attack Be Revenge. The attack does ten damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile, and uh, the Vengeance uh, for also double color synergy does. 20 damage plus 10 more damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile. So you discard Pokemon, um, and you keep attacking with non-EX attackers to, uh, for a lot of damage to take knockouts. And basically that's how the deck works. It also runs one Jolteon so that you can hit for lightning weak, uh, Pokemon weak to lightning, uh, four EVs so the it can evolve, um, one Bottle B to retrieve like special energy and stuff, four Shamans to, uh, draw cards, um, four Cone B to evolve into Vespiquen, uh, one Mr. Mime with the Bench Barrier ability prevents all damage done to your Bench Pokemon by attacks, and if you don't need it for some sort of reason, uh, like if it's not really playable in a matchup, you can just discard it, and it makes uh, Beer Venge or Vengeance even stronger. Uh, for Unknown, um, which you put it on your bench and use the, the ability Farewell Letter to uh, discard it, and it makes Vespi Quinn's attack stronger, and it gives you like, an, uh, another card uh, from your deck. Um, then one Rob Wallafet, which um, that way if you start it, you can start it, oh, and it has the ability by barricade, and uh, each player's um, uh, Pokemon that have abilities besides uh, besides psychic types uh, have no abilities, um, so they can't shame and draw. But once you switch it out, you can do shame and draw and all that stuff, and then you can discard it if you don't need it anymore. Um, it runs 28 Pokemon, so it can do a lot of damage. Um, trainer cards, it runs. Four battle compressors, um, so you can compress out Pokemon and other stuff you might need, like supporters. Uh, one computer search, uh, discard two cards from your hand. If you can't discard two cards, you can't play this card. Search your deck for a card and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. Uh, one sacred ash, so you can get back Pokemon, um, like your Vespiquins and uh, Flareons and stuff like that. Four Ultra Balls, so you can pick up uh, any Pokemon you need and discard stuff from your hand that you don't need. Uh, four VS Seekers, so you can pick up uh, supporters that you don't need, or pick up supporters from your discard pile that you need to use. Uh, one AZ, uh, so you can pick up your Pokemon. Uh, one Blacksmith, so you can uh, power up uh, Flareon fast. Uh, one Getsis, so if you don't know what this card does, your opponent reveals his or her hand and shuffles all item cards found there into his or her deck. Then draw a number of cards equal to the number of item cards that your opponent shuffled into his or her deck. Um, Grafton use, ends up using this card a lot and talking about it a lot in our interview. Um, very funny and interesting. Um, also, uh, one Hex Maniac uh, to uh, disrupt abilities. Uh, two Lysanders to take knockouts and put stuff in the active position. One in for draws and disrupting their, uh, your opponent's uh, draws. Um, three Professor Junipers to draw cards. Um, and then they also he also plays one Forest of Giant Plants. Four double colorless energy and three fire energies to power up um, Flareon if he needs to, and so he also has basic energies. Um, but yeah, he ran this at Georgia Regionals, and he ended up taking 12th place with it. Um, so congratulations to him, and that's basically how the deck works. Um, we'll get into the interview now. What is up, guys? This is Braden Brake, and I have a special interview for you today. Today I'm going to be uh, interviewing Grafton Roll, who took... 12th place, I believe, is that correct? Yes, sir. At Georgia Regionals. 12th place at Georgia Regionals. Uh, he did very good. He ran a uh, the Vespiquin, Flareon, uh, Jolteon deck, and it's it's really good, and he did a great job with it. Um, but we're going to get right into the interview. How are you doing today, Grafton? I'm pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Um, uh, so, do you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I've been playing Pokemon for about 13 years now. I am currently 20 years old and enrolled in college for computer science. Ah, cool. That's what I'm actually. I'm actually going to major in that starting next year. So that's cool. Um. So what got you into Pokemon? You know, uh, just around when I was seven years old, I was walking through Target, picked up a deck, and thought they were cool, and then started playing with neighborhood kids, and then you know, just found a league, and then started playing Pokemon as soon as I figured out there was tournaments. <laughs> nice. Um. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get you to go ahead and tell us a little bit about your deck um, that you ran at Regionals, um, and tell us how you decided to build it and everything, if you don't mind. So, I've been playing Flareon 
since the card came out, I originally, you know, started playing it with the Cafagragus that used to mm -hmm. faint itself to put three damage counters on just to get more Pokemon on the discard pile. Mm -hmm. And once Vespiqueen came out, it was just a great transition into it. So, I, uh, the night before, I was talking to my friends, one of the, mainly Rahul Reddy, he helps a lot with all the Flareon Vespiqueen needs, mm -hmm. and he was telling me how good the Jolteon was and everything. And so I had a base build of it, but with help from him and Michael Canavas, we turned it into what it was then. Yeah, um, if you don't mind, will you go ahead and explain what the, uh, what the Flareon and Jolteon do, um, in the deck? It's pretty straightforward, but for those who aren't uh, familiar with it, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Yeah, so, both Flareon and Vespiqueen have the same attack. They're different names, the Vespiqueen is Be Revenge, and the Flareon is Vengeance. What it is, is a DCE for 20 base damage plus 10 damage for every Pokemon in your discard pile. So the basic concept of the deck is, get your Pokemon fainted, use Battle Compressors to put Pokemon in the mm -hmm. discard pile, and then swing for a ton of damage with a non EX attacker. Yes, um, and then basically Flareon does the same thing. And does not, Jolteon, you use the one that changes uh, Vespiquins or, or your attacker's type to electric, right? Yes. Alright, so that way you can hit for more weaknesses. Um, why do you choose to run the deck at regionals? So, like I said, it's really just a comfort pick of mine. I've been mm -hmm. running the two cards yeah. for such a long time now. I, I, I almost ran a few different things. I thought about running Sableye. I even considered Night March, but... I've just been playing this deck for so long now, it's mm -hmm. just so comfortable. Yeah, it's actually the the first expanded deck I built. Um, actually, when I actually built it, at the time I thought I was building a standard deck, and then I got to my league, and they were like, that's not standard. I was like, what? But yeah, that was really funny, but um, that was forever ago. But um, yeah, so I, I, I love this deck too. Um, I, I actually never built it with the uh, Jolteon in it, but I, you know, I ran it with the Vesquin and Flareon. Really like both those Pokemon. Yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of Jolteon either, and I'm really not a fan of it in standard, obviously, because mm -hmm. you don't have the EV lines in. But Rahul and Michael were just raving about how good it was, yeah. and I was like, all right, well, I should be running into some Mega Ray there. So yes, um, so uh, I'll go ahead and get you to um, tell me about your like regionals experience as a whole, like how the atmosphere was, um, how was it enjoyable, um, then. Well, after that, we'll try and get you to go ahead and tell us about how Swiss went, and so on. Uh, yeah, so, Georgia Regionals, I always enjoy the tournament. It's always mm -hmm. a good, you know, atmosphere, as you were saying. Uh, the venue, we've been there for a couple years now. I really like it. There's plenty of room, which is always good. It's never good to be scrunched up on the tables. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, everybody was really friendly. You know, plenty of food options in the college town yes. as well. Um. So then go ahead and tell us about like your matchups in Swiss and how they went, uh, anything that you thought was interesting, and just, I'll just let you go ahead and take care of that. Sure. So, you know, the the main decks I was planning on seeing there were obviously Night March. Mm -hmm. I was worried about running into Trevenant, and the other major deck was be either like Evital or Mega Ray. Mm -hmm. So we started off the day, it's, you know, standard kind of thing. We ran into a Night March deck, and we actually ended up beating it, which felt really good starting the day, beating the deck that people think is stronger than you are. And so, round one was a pretty good success. I don't really remember round two so much. I think it was pretty much just a pretty easy wash, just good setups, beat the guy 2-0. I'm pretty sure it was an Evital deck. Mm -hmm. And then round three came, and I played against Austin Vance. I think it was round three. It could have been round four. I'm not entirely sure. The, the whole days are such a blur playing so much yeah. Pokemon. And so I'm playing against Austin Vance, and he opens turn one Comp Search, Battle Compressor, Ultra Ball, oh turn one Ar Arche uh, Maxi's uh, Arche For the Arche Ops, yeah. Yeah, and he just crushes me. Oh my. And I was like, alright, well, we can bring it back, we'll, we'll try to beat him in the last two. Next game, I go first, have a decent setup, and he just goes, Comp Search, Battle Compressor, Ultra <laughs> Ball, Maxi's Arche Ops, in his opening hand again. And he just looks at me, and he's just like... I've, this has never happened before, and we were just <laughs> laughing about how luck, how much luck it was. Yeah. That's so, funny. you know, after round three, a little salty, but yeah. we got through it. So, um, the day started, uh, you know, turning for the worse. We, we got up to 3-1, but then we lost the next round, so 3-2. Won the next one, lost the next one, so now we're 4-3. And I'm thinking, oh man, I'm out of the tournament. You know, most of the time you can't make it in a top cut, so three yes. losses. 
But I'm going to go ahead and play the last two rounds, see if I can get some points for the day, because I was close to my world's invite, mm -hmm. try to get that top kicker of uh, 64, I think it was, for the day. Yeah, have you gotten that yet, your world's invite? I did. I, yeah. I actually got it off of a league challenge. I got to nice. 302. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. So, we play the la I play the last two rounds, and I end up winning both of them. I think the last two rounds I played against another Mega Ray, mm -hmm. which just was a really, you know, with the Jolteon in there, I finally got him to work out, just really easy win. And then the last round I played against another Night March deck, and I was like, no, not again, not another Night March. And so the day I actually ended up playing um, four Night Marches overall, yeah. and I was at this time, I beat the first, I beat two and lost to one. And so this was the last one. I was like, I don't want to lose this night march. And I did end up beating it. Nice. So we ended up 6-3. And I was like, man, I don't... I, I was looking at the table numbers. And I was like, wow, a lot of 18-pointers are actually going to make it in. Hmm. And it turns out that only one out of the 18 points actually ended up whiffing for the day. Hmm. So, you know, just the amount... I think I think that's why it's, there is, like, exactly... 257 people or so so the the math all just added up really well so 18 pointers could make it in nice so we got lucky we made it to day two tell, tell me about day two uh, how'd that go so so day two started off uh i had to play against my friend ryan Sablehouse, and he was playing night march and like i said i'm already three two against night marches for the tournament so far so i'm feeling good yeah a lot better for the matchup than i probably should be but he ends up just beating me just mm. mopping the floor with me i think i think we had some really unlucky games it was weird like the first game i whiffed a lot the next game he went through 50 cards in his deck and didn't find a dce it was crazy and the last round i think i pretty much just drew past and he ended up beating me so you know not the best but we, we you know win some lose some against yes. night march we're still three two over it for the tournament and i think that was the last one that i played so i was pretty happy that i had a positive record against the deck so, going in with 18 points and knowing that you have to make it to 29 to make it to the top 8, I only have 4 rounds left and I know that I have to win 3 and tie 1 to even have a chance. But really what I'm shooting for is I want to get that top 16 spot so I can get the points and basically ensure my world's invite. But we en I ended up like winning the next 2 rounds and I was like, wow, uh, this is crazy, I actually have a chance to pull mm -hmm. this off. And... Then I play against somebody, oh gosh, I can't remember who this round was. It was a really good round, and I feel mm. bad because it was <laughs> a really, really close and exciting game. And I ended up beating him, and then the last round comes along, and I'm playing against, I'm playing against Evital, mm -hmm. but it's not, no, it's not even, it's just uh, Turbo Dark. Oh. And Turbo Dark, it's like the one matchup that I want to see. It is, it's, that's your, that's your, that's your uh, ace. Yeah, it's just the best matchup that I can get, and I'm excited for it. I'm like, yes, got the Turbo Dark, let's go. And the first game, he just, like, donks me. I start with Jirachi, yeah. draw nothing, feels bad, so I end up losing that game. And then the next the next uh, game, I go first, I get this him, and I make him put his entire hand into his deck. Oh. And so I end up winning that game. So we get down to game three, and it's close, but he got a little bit of an early lead, being mm -hmm. speed dark are going first. Yeah. And we're starting to beat each other, but he just gets a little bit ahead, mm -hmm. and I start running out of attackers, and he makes this crazy play where he no I put an unknown down. My hand is dead. I only have mm -hmm. one card in my hand. And he makes this bold play to get rid of his entire hand by... Um, using Battle Compressor mm -hmm. to Battle Compressor a Silent Lab away, then using a wow. Dowsing Machine to get the Silent Lab, but drops his entire hand, comes up with Sableye, and uses Junk Hunt. Now, what wow. he didn't know is when he Junk Hunted for the VS Seeker and the other card, is that the one card in my hand was Getsus. Oh. So I open my hand, <laughs> I draw, and it's a DCE. I'm like, well, all I need now is a Vespi Queen, and I can actually kill the Sableye and maybe make game out of it. So I use the Getsus, and he just, the look of despair on his face. So now he has a zero card hand, I draw two, I get the Vespi Queen, I come up, kill Sableye, and he's like, those are the cards that you had in your hand, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. So. That's funny. Take a prize card, it's a worthless stage one, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I really need to draw out of this. 
but he doesn't have a hand, so we should be okay. I should be able to take another prize. Mm. He comes up, top decks the VS Seeker. Oh, my. VS Seekers, Juniper, draw seven, kills my Vespi Queen. I hmm. draw dead for the next two turns, and that pretty much wraps up the game. So I think this is like his, like, one of his few tournaments of the season. I'm not entirely sure. I had mm -hmm. a little bit of a conversation with the guy, but not much. I didn't recognize him. And. So he made it into top eight. I got the top sixteen. But like I mm -hmm. said, that pretty much got me my world's invite. So yeah. I was happy. Yeah, still, still a great, great finishing point. Yeah. Nothing, to, nothing wrong with top twelve. Um. So yeah. Um. Uh, what was probably like your favorite matchup out of the whole day, and then like um, specifically like any like just really crazy plays that you had or anything that you wanted to talk about? Um. I, th I think that last matchup. That, that last, last matchup, matchup. That was, uh, that was from that was, from the way you describe it, it. Sounds very good. Yeah, it was really memorable. It was a lot of fun. My my favorite plays of the day were gets this place mm -hmm. just because there's sometimes you get this somebody and when you have to when you put five out of their six cards back into their deck, it it just feels really good. Like there is <laughs> one night march player that I played against and he had. Uh, like a seven card hand, and I get this him, and his hand afterwards is triple Joltik. Oh my! So Rip. it just those gets this man. If if you're playing an expanded tournament, the first card you should be putting into your deck is a gets this. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um. So um. Yeah, thank you for talking about that. So you ended up finishing um twelfth. And how did um the guy who I can't remember his name? What was his name? The your last match? Yeah, I can't remember either. All right, and how did you know how he ended up finishing? I believe he made it into top four. All right, well that's cool. Um, so I think there's one or two more regional events before Worlds, and then and then there's Worlds, and that's expanded. What possible changes do you think you could make to the deck before that, with uh, Steam Siege um being added to uh being playable, and uh, with just more stuff coming out? What do you think you can uh, make? What changes do you think you can make to the deck to improve it? And do you think it will be viable um, at Worlds? You know, with um, with the announcement of the new set mm -hmm. coming out, I'm not entirely sure because this set coming out uh, that just came out, the the new one, the Fates Collide, yes, I believe Fates it's Clyde. called. Uh, there is nothing in that set for the deck. Yeah, it's nothing. So you know, I was I was worried about that. So we get no strength from that. I know next set the cards coming out that. Basically, is Lysander's trump card, but just for Pokemon. Mm -hmm, carry. That's really bad for the deck. Um, oh yeah, that is. So I th I think this is the final run for now. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it, I can sneak into a tournament with it. Yeah. When because people aren't expecting it and they mm -hmm. won't be playing that shuffle cards back in once that kills Night March. I'm not sure, but I th I don't think it's going to be very viable for mm -hmm. worlds, worlds. So uh, what do you think you'll do instead? Um, or do you have any idea yet? Uh, well, you know, I, I really like the new Aerodactyl. <laughs> yes, uh, with, uh, Omastar. <laughs> no, just by itself. Just oh, by itself. Aerodactyl, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I was thinking about the Omastar, but it's just a little too slow. Yeah, uh, um, just... I've actually never ran that in Expanded, but I have ran it in Standard, and it's actually, um, if you can get it to set up, it's a lot of fun. I've heard it's a lot easier to get going in Expanded and a lot better. Um, yeah, yeah. But um yeah it's it is fun it's um it's just like a mega scissor except a little bit better honestly mm, but yeah um so you think you'll run that at worlds yeah uh, it, if, that's uh, it's so far out I don't know it's, yeah you don't know uh, yeah there's there's scary. no way to tell now yeah you're yeah. definitely right about that so Gotta um prepare for Nats right now yeah yeah Nats Nats first you're right um what do you think you'll do at that um. You know, I'm trying to tell myself not to play Vespi Queen again. But yeah. We might end up just playing Vespi Queen yeah, again. Yeah, Karen won't be back before then, so I mean, it's definitely still playable. Um, so is there anything else you want to talk about that I didn't cover about the deck, about regional, about anything um, that you want to say in the interview that I haven't covered yet? You still there?
Uh, I think we are losing. Um, I don't always have. Whoops. There you go. Are we back? Okay. Yeah, sorry. I think we lost connection. Something weird happened with Skype. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, sorry. What did you hear last? Uh, you asked me if there's any other things. Yes. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions about the deck, I'm happy to answer them. They can just send me a private message or anything. Yeah, um, um, uh, more on that. Um, yeah, uh, Grafton, I just reached out to him on Facebook, and he was really, um, happy. He, totally happy to help out and do this interview with me. Um, if you want to ask him or me any questions, you can definitely at reach, uh, reach out to him. I will leave a link for that, and then I will also leave, you can leave a comment in the uh, comment section down below. And uh, I will try my best to get back to you on that. And if you enjoyed this video and interview, uh, please leave a like. It does help support the channel, and I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Grafton, for uh, doing this interview. Um, it was really good, and I really appreciate it. No, oh, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, and congratulations on uh, your top 12th finish and uh, your um, invite to Worlds, and good luck at Nats. Thank you, sir. All right, this has been uh, Braden Break. You guys have a great day.